Hello everybody, this is Starman, and welcome to the final chapter of Let's Play Under a Killing Moon. Well, the good news is we're up on the Moonchild base of the Brotherhood of Purity. The bad news is we have a couple of hours left to save the world, and nothing to help us except for the watch with the hidden microchip we have no idea what to do with. But it could be worser. We are in a rather nice garden with some rather nice modern art. Back on Earth, this thing wouldn't last 10 minutes without getting spray painted. This arboretum is like the Garden of Eden. The trees and plants are all real and full bloom. There's no place like this on Earth anymore. Shame we're going to have to blow it up. But first things first, we have to get out of here. Any ever Misties out there suddenly getting a deja vu? Hexfield view screen. The walls are constructed of bonded titanium. Not even a blowtorch would cut through it. Well, we don't have a blowtorch anyway. Well, if I'm not mistaken, that's a puff buster smoke detector. Who are you gonna call? This must be the way out, and I can hear someone pacing from the other side. Probably the security guard. So, we'll need to figure out a way to deal with him, because as sure as the Lord made little green apples, we try and go through that door, we're going to get shot. Looks like someone didn't get around to picking up this pile of leaves. Groundskeepers must belong to a union. These columns are just for looks. Makes me wonder what's holding up the ceiling. Alright, let's take a look around and see what... We have that we can utilize. A rake. Too bad someone already gathered up all the leaves in here. This is a rather nice view. Hmm, the infinite void. Reminds me of my conversations with Milan Toad. Burn. Hey. I think I see my office from up here. And just do one quick little gag here. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Spock! And here we have... A slightly different cluster of gray pixels. This rock looks like it may actually be a piece of flint. This piece of flint takes me back to my days as a tenderfoot scout. We spent hours trying to start a fire so we could heat up our beans and weenies. Mmm, beans and weenies. Wait, is that a metaphor for something? This door looks too accessible to be an exit. We must be getting close to the dramatic music kicked in. Oh, a bottle of lighting fluid. These cult members must like to barbecue. Well, who doesn't like a nice barbecue? And spin around in. It's another oddly different cluster of gray pixels. Hmm, this piece of rock looks like it's come loose from the mortar. And now we have everything we need for our guard trap. And how is this going to work, you ask? Well, I'm glad you did. What we do is we take our rake here. Actually, let's look at our rake first. This is a rugged John Stag Harvester rake. It's very solid and heavy. And lighter fluid. I octane lighter fluid in the point and squirt container. Very convenient. Come on, baby, light my fire. Nice piece of stone. Smooth, shiny, and fits snugly in the palm of my hand. That's what she said. 
All right, so we shall take our Big Jim Slade. Oh, no, not, not Big Jim Slade. Who is it again? This is a rugged John Stag Harvester rake. Ah. Very solid and heavy. That's what she said. But no, you can see how I would think of uh, Big Jim Slade with this long phallic object. But we shall take this long phallic object and stick it in the leaves right here. And then we shall soak the leaves of our lighter fluid. Like so. And now we will take our rocks and we will bang the rocks together. And now, we will get our rocks off. Oh, and he's a red shirt to boot. Sounds like the opening of Beat It. What an idiot. Oh! All right. And now, again, I got to do this. We got movie sign! Okay, no, we don't. This door leads back to the Arboretum, and I'd rather not get trapped in there again. My hay fever was starting to act up. Okay. This door looks like it probably opens from the other side. Okay, so we can't go there. Emergency access. I'd say my situation qualifies as an emergency. Yeah, but 10 to 1, we can't get in there anyway. And try and get in there will just get us busted. Sounds like the purification party is going on somewhere behind this door. Yeah, I don't think we want to go in there, because what did we learn from earlier? Rule number four of the PI code, don't get caught. We do, however, have something interesting here on the floor. Looks like someone laid a piece of pipe here. Yeah, I'll bet there's a lot of people trying to lay pipe tonight. If you know what I mean, and I think you do. Ha ha ha. Pipe is slim, but it feels pretty solid. Make a nice pry bar. That's what she said! Okay, that one didn't work. Alright, let's see what's down this way. And... Stasis room. And I think we'll go ahead and save here, just to be safe. As I enter the stasis room, I feel like I've stepped into a fairy tale. I'm no Prince Charming, but there's a sleeping beauty lying peacefully in a cryonic chamber. It's Ava Shanzi. Boy, do I need to talk to her. As I look around, I spot a console nearby. Looking it over, I figure it must be used to control the cryonic sleep state. If I can resuscitate Ava, maybe we can still stop the cult. I've seen consoles like this before. The four buttons along the top must administer injections. The two slider controls look like they regulate the air temperature and oxygen level inside the cryonic tube. I seem to remember that slider mechanisms like these are really sensitive and need to be moved slowly. Well, first things first. I'll need to turn this thing on. And yeah, this is another one of those puzzles that they put into adventure games which are mostly solved through trial and error. And I'm going to try and get through this without messing up. But this one 
is rather unique for this game, and if I do mess up, we'll get to see why. Okay, so now we got a stasis cam on. Got the uh, lovely young lady in her under things. Well, sports bra and, you know, shorts. It could be much skimpier. Okay, so we've got it on. Now we got slider for body temperature, oxygen ratio, and then administering truth serum, sodium bicarbonate, adrenaline, and an electric shock. So, first thing we want to do is get our temperature up. Aha! A red light went off in one of those phase one boxes. I must have done something right. Now I've got to get those other boxes to light up. Okay, and we'll go ahead and do the oxygen next. Okay, phase two. Now, need something to get her heart beating again. So, uh, I think a shot of adrenaline. Hey, all right, so far so good. And uh, electrical shock to get things moving. All right, phase one complete. Now, uh, phase two, going to slowly edge up the temperature again. Okay, got it at about mid-80s. Now, let's see. Do we want to do... Don't do those again. Um, let's try by carbonate. Hmm. That yellow warning light doesn't look good. Maybe I should wait a few seconds and see if it goes off before I try anything else. And yeah, you screw up too many times, it does kill her, and you are a SOL. But okay, she seems to have stabilized. So let's try the sodium penafol this time. Okay, that worked. Uh, now we'll try the bicarbonate. Okay, that was a mistake. Okay, she's stable again. Let's try and increase the oxygen ratio. Okay, okay, that was a mistake. She's stable again. Uh, let, let's go for electrical shock. Okay, that was a mistake. And she just died. Well, how was I supposed to figure out that stupid stasis panel? It's hardly fair to give me only one crack at it. Well, okay. Yes, God agreed that that puzzle was unfair and is sending us back to give it another try. But that's not all. As I enter the stasis room, I feel like I've stepped into a fairy tale. I'm no Prince Charming, but there's a sleeping beauty lying peacefully in a cryonic chamber. It's Ava Shanzi. Boy, do I need to talk to her. As I look around, I spot a console nearby. Looking it over, I figure it must be used to control the cryonic sleep state. If I can resuscitate Ava, maybe we can still stop the cult. So yes, we start over. But we start exactly where we left off. So okay, raising the oxygen work. Shock didn't work. Let's try adrenaline this time. Okay, the adrenaline worked. And let's go ahead and start doing the oxygen again. Okay. So far, so good. So let's go ahead and raise the temperature up all the way. Okay, there's step one. Um, let's try the sodium this time because it hasn't. We haven't needed that until now. Hmm. That yellow warning light doesn't look good. Maybe I should wait a few seconds and see if it goes off before I try anything else. Actually, it's the, bi the bicarbonate we used before. Maybe it's the, pen the sodium pinnafol we need to use this time. Actually, no, no. Let's try doing oxygen first this time. Okay, got her oxygen and her temperature up. Now let's try the sodium bicarbonate. Okay, big mistake, big mistake, but we're still in this, we're still in this. She's just a little unstable. It's still good. It's still good. Okay, sodium pinnafol, not the right one either. And, okay, we just lost her again. 
Well, how was I supposed to figure out that stupid stasis panel? It's hardly fair to give me only one crack at it. Well, okay. Okay. Second try. As I enter this. Okay. Um, electrical shock this time? Hmm. That yellow warning light doesn't look good. Maybe I should wait a few seconds and see if it goes off before I try anything else. Okay, maybe we do adrenaline and uh, then sodium pentafall this time. So don't we do adrenaline third time last time? No, okay, well, adrenaline worked, adrenaline worked. Um, okay, pentafall was a bad idea. But hey, we're narrowing it down. Got 50-50 shot this time, I think. And we did it! It's a brand new girl! So, is it all over? Are your prophecies taken care of? Look, prophecies aren't in my job description, okay? I'm just a humble PI trying to save the world as we know it. Well, if you're not in the cult, then what are you doing here? Look, I think we're running out of time here, but my name's Tex Murphy. I know you're Ava Shanzi because I followed your trail from the Colonel to GRS to up here. So why don't you tell me how you ended up getting freeze-dried? Percival has a thing for me, so he decided not to have me killed. Instead, he put me into stasis to keep me out of the way until after the purification. Well, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is the purification won't start for about 45 minutes. The bad news is we've only got 45 minutes to stop these people. Luckily, I've got the winter chip, but you need to tell me how to use it. Well, how did you get it? Listen, there's no time for explanations now. We have to hurry. Take this. There are instructions on what to do with the winter chip. When you get into position, wait for my signal. In exactly 30 minutes, I'm going to create a power surge. That will give us our last chance to stop the cult. That note also has instructions on how to reach the escape pods. I'll wait until the last second, but hurry. And listen, Murphy, good luck. If we get out of here, you can tell me your story. So... They didn't bother searching her for papers or orders. Or keys. Yeah, th this does bring to mind something that occurred to me during the last uh, chapter in retrospect, that uh, the Brotherhood of Purity and the Chameleon are kind of incompetent. I mean... Think about it. The only reason we knew how to get to this point is because the chameleon shot off his mouth about going to this bar-off world in front of Alana, and he also told her the secret token that the Brotherhood used to identify themselves, you know, the silver dollar. If he hadn't done any of that, we'd be, you know, SOL right now. Not that it matters, because once we got to the bar, the bartender chick who's in league with the cultists, even though she apparently knew who we were, played along and let us go in and talk to Feral Puss, and I, I love that name, Feral Puss. Uh, we, we go in with him, and he's like, yeah, my boss ordered me to kill you, but I'm going to have you play this game of chance instead. And then immediately after going through the, you know, death trap that's going to kill us anyway which are his orders he tells us to go out and get the drug drink which instead of killing us once we're unconscious they take us up to their base and just leave us here and the you know Lowell Percival does his you know bond speech of how oh you are helpless to stop me but I respect you and we could join together you and I yeah I mean, I know it's part of the tropes of the Indiana Jones, James Bond, you know, it, pulp adventures that we're a part of in this game. But even so. Okay, we're going back the way that we came. And here we have an observation deck. So, this is the door to the observatory. Sounds like a place worth looking into. Yeah, I love observing things. Well, speaking of observing things, we didn't look at our mission yet. 
Okay, Agent Estrus from Capricorn HQ. Infiltration of the Moonchild. You are the second agent to get aboard the Moonchild. Agent Loman was able to transfer marginally detailed information before being discovered and terminated. His transmissions provide us with just enough data to formulate a plan of action. And it just scrolled up out past where I could read it. This message will self-destruct and okay, just enough data to formulate a plan of action. Our computers tabulate success failure ratio at 3763. Okay, get access to level 18 of the Moonchild. This level contains an arboreum, a main hall, a stasis room, and an observatory. Check. Locate and retrieve the link-up computer. Agent Loman was able to hide the computer somewhere in level 18 before he was discovered. Hopefully that's in the next room. You'll need one of the Moonchild's own computer cables in order to attach the link-up computer to the Moonchild's main computer. There's a computer console linked to the Moonchild's main computer hidden somewhere in a wall on this level. Put the winner chip into the link-up computer and attach the link-up computer to the computer console. Open the emergency exit and move quickly to bay D5. We cannot predict the effect of the winner chip's virus on the Moonchild's computer system, so it's impossible to say how much time you'll have to reach the escape pod. Good luck, Agent Estrus. Capricorn High Command. All right. Well, hey. Nice view again. What I need right now is a shooting star to wish for luck on. Those asteroids look like they're following the Moonchild around like big stone puppies. This is a rather neat view, isn't it? Hmm. That plant looks suspiciously off balance. What a great tree. If I get off this godforsaken pleasure satellite, I'm taking it with me. It'd look great in my office. <sighs> Hello? What a great... Ah. This floor panel looks like it's removable. I'll need something to pry it up with. Well, isn't it convenient that I just happen to have this pipe? Looks like one of these computer cables ought to do the trick. All right. And this looks like a likely cabinet. This panel door is locked. Well. Yeah, a bit of a mythology gag here. The uh, box for Lynx 986. Uh, Access Computer Games, big claim to fame, apart from the Tex Murphy series, was that they put out a, a golf sim called Lynx, which was a pretty darn good golf sim as far as these things go. My dad was a big fan of it. But we get it and move it out of the way. Aha! This must be the mini computer. Okay. Looks like this computer was made specifically to run with a winter chip. Hey, anarchy inside. Do 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 do. This must be one of the winter chips the colonel referred to. Yeah, apparently Ava took my watch. Okay, so we now have computer virus link up. And computer virus link up with the fancy connection. And this looks oddly out of place. This looks like an old-fashioned telephone jack. No, it's a recess button. I'll need something to reach in. Hmm, something long and thin to stick into a hole. Well, I think we know what we need. A bendy straw! You people are sick. The cocktail glass is worthless, but I love flex straws. This flex straw is made of ceranite. It's practically unbreakable. And a good thing, too. All right, well, we will take our straw. And use the straw on the hole. Hey, that's convenient. Aha. 
This panel should give me access to the Moonchild's main computer. Hold on, everybody, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Mm, fasten your seatbelts, boys. <sighs> Although now I do have to ponder, do I have the right to do this? I mean, yes, the Brotherhood of Purity are a bunch of fanatical, murderous lunatics, but there are women and children up here who don't know what they're signed on for, you know, who may be true believers in this weird faith, who don't f know that they're supporting a system of bigotry and hatred. On the other hand, I want to well, make stuff go boom. It's been almost 30 minutes. If they didn't find Ava, she should be creating a power surge any second. That'll give me time to patch the mini-computer into the Moonchild main computer. <laughs> Now I've got to get to the engineering corridors, and fast. I've got a system warning on level 18, section J. I'm attempting to override that. Uh, now I'm showing a temporary system failure. Climate control is down on levels 4 through 18. Winter sequence engaged. Oh, now we have to buy the winter sequence a gift. I don't understand it. The whole system's going haywire. Did you try turning it on and turning it back off again? All the stores in the mall. Cancel the three ring circus. Secure all the animals in the zoo. What the hell is going on down there? We got electrical short fires breaking out all over up here. All integrity has been compromised. This place is gonna go up like a Roman candle on the 4th of July. Two minutes to self destruct Nice sedate running there around Texas part. Save me, Lord Zenu! Yeah, J.J. Abrams, we did the lens flare trick first and better. He had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped the revelers, and died each in the despairing posture of his fall, and darkness, and decay, and death held eliminable dominion over all. Well, actually, I blew the hell out of all of them at once, but that sounds much more poetic. The colonel survived, and he's drinking again. I did some good work, Tex. I guess you didn't forget everything I taught you. Maybe it's not too late I could make a real detective out of you. I don't know. This saving the world business doesn't pay so well. My cousin Vinny says he can cut me in on some Amway action. That's a load of hooey. You got it in your blood, Tex. You'd gum chew for pocket change. Hey, pocket change would be a step up for me. Well, you know, I've done pretty well over the past few years. Put a few greenbacks away. But I'm not so young as I used to be. Maybe we could work out an arrangement. Eh? I'll be the brains, you be the legs. 
a lot of work out there for somebody with your skills. What are you saying? Partners? Why well, don't retirement in the island with all the mm. naked women? Nah. Ava. Yeah, I was hoping I'd see you around. Oh, hi, Tex. Hello, handsome. Long time no see. You look good <laughs> as ever. What have you been up to? Uh, I just Not love much. him doing the quick uh, <laughs> smell Say, check. Uh, tell me, have you still got that Twister game? I do. But I haven't played it in a long time. Listen, Tex, something's popped up. I think I found a partner to do undercover work with. I'll see you around. Well, can I have Malin Toad's phone so number? So here I am, back where I started. Lonely, broke, and late for an appointment back in my office. Okay, so maybe it's not a perfect world. Maybe there are more glamorous ways to spend Saturday night than teaching cha-cha lessons to lonely women like Dolores Lightbody. At least she's a regular client and it seems to make her happy. And she always pays me up front in cash. Now that I think about it, things are better. I cleared up my bar tab with Louie and I did solve the pawn shop burglary for Rook. Yeah, once word gets around, I'll be up to my neck in good paying jobs. Looks like Murphy pulled it off, sir. Yes, but next time, he may not be so fortunate. Next time, sir? The forces of darkness sleep, but do not die. Even now, I sense evil stirring. An evil about to re-enter the life of our friend Murphy. Tex, honey! Long time no see. Forgive me? Yeah, because he's dancing with his ex-mother-in-law, stepmother-in-law. Or does anybody remember the Dolores Lightbody, Sylvia Linsky relationship from Mean Streets? Apparently not. One, I, one, take one, action. So you're Tex Murphy. Ah, well, we're going to make your trip as comfortable as possible. Nighty-night. <laughs> Perfect. Comes to me. Yeah, the only problem was you don't shoot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, she is so totally shit-faced. <sighs> that makes me sad. But yeah, actually, there's a slight bit of a... Oh, hold on. Clip. Tomorrow night. You will die. And I passed the kidney stone. Okay, good. Wow. Oh, hey. yes. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar. Don't spoil more, but it's not good. Oscar. Okay, let's do it one more time. That typical director. <laughs> That's perfect. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> Let's just... I, I can never understand that logic in directing. <laughs> Perfect. That's the best I've ever seen. Let's do it one more time. Um, on the, uh, on the pain list. And yeah, wow, the uh, sound mix gets a little bit weird on the credits here. So I'm not going to say anything until after we're through this, because there's one more clip coming. Zero, A1. Scene 0A1, take one, action. Hi, you did some good work, Tex. I guess you didn't forget everything I taught you. Maybe it's not too late I can make a real detective out of you. That's <laughs> ah, terrible shit. <laughs> yeah, the producers wish to inform you that no Geigers were harmed during the production of this game. And in memory of Jerry Christian, who played... Uh, Francesca. And there's the logo one more time. 
But uh, yeah, this game did kind of reboot the series a little bit with the throwaway gag about uh, Dolores Lightbody and Sylvia Linsky showing up because you know in Mean Streets. Uh, Sylvia was the fir- was the daughter from Carl Linsky's first marriage, and Dolores was his fiance, and neither one of them liked each other that much. And uh, yeah, you'd think it'd be a little weird the two of them running into each other, which could be why Tex was screaming. But actually, uh, the fifth game of this series, Overseer, will officially reboot all that and give us the new, officially sanctioned origin story of Tex Murphy. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself, because before we get to Overseer, we have to go through one other game, and for my money, it's the best game in the hexology of Tex Murphy Adventure Games, a little game called the Pandora Directive. But uh, before we get that, a couple of quick final thoughts on this one, and looks like I got darn close to a perfect score. I think I missed one thing, uh, one one point observe something examine an object thing here and of course i screwed up uh with pulling that lever i shouldn't have otherwise we've gotten a perfect score so hey go me but uh yeah as much as i snark on the ending and the story and how utterly annoying the bit with the drone in grs is uh this is a great game this is one of the best adventure games i've ever played and this is the one that started the Tex Murphy series on the road to its now legendary status. And I think the, you know, the quality of the design, the desire to pioneer new territory using technology that was just barely uh, affordable to the common gamer back then, you know, it shows. And yeah, some of the acting is a little cheesy. Yeah, some of the slapstick and the jokes are a little goofy, but you know what? It's fun. And you don't get games that are just fun like this anymore for the most part. I mean, you'll get some humor, you'll get some comedy, but you don't have anything that's just unashamedly, it is what it is, and it tells you a good story, gives you some laughs, and entertains you for however long it takes you to get through it. And makes you feel a little bit smarter when you finally manage to get through those puzzles and go, "Ah, I figured this out without the guide. I am a genius! And we will get a lot more of that in uh, Pandora Directive. And Pandora Directive, it's going to be the longest of these Let's Plays because it utilizes something that we don't get in any other Tex Murphy games. Well, up until Tesla Effect, but even then, not quite. Uh, The next game is going to have multiple endings. And the endings are based on an alignment system. And it was one of the first games uh, to utilize an alignment system where your actions would help determine... Uh, how people reacted to you, and what would happen in the game. But, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, Final Thoughts, Under a Killing Moon, great game. You can download it on good old games. I think it's definitely worth it, even if you don't get the package deal where you can get all of the Tex Murphy games at once for a low price, which usually comes up every uh, couple months or so. So if you get the chance to play this game, I highly recommend it. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching me stumble through it. I'll see you next time for Pandora Directive. Take care until then.